What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and today we are taking a look at the updated version of the Porsche Taycan Turbo S. This is the Sport Turismo, so basically the sporty station wagon. And today we're going to do a quick recap review of what has changed. Uh, we haven't driven the Turbo S in the Sport Turismo version yet and well... It is just one of my favorite Porsches. And if you would have said that five or 10 years ago that the electric Porsche would be one of my favorites of the lineup, I would have thought you were absolutely bonkers. But I can honestly say that I enjoy driving this car so much and that has to do with a couple of things that we're going to cover today. So let's take a look at the spec because this Turbo S has been specced well in this I think this is a uni color, this is not a metallic and uh, it's a dark grey. I couldn't find the color online, but if you know the color, let me know in the comments down below. We have the carbon fiber trim as well at the front, beautiful inlay on the front bumper and the very recognizable headlights and just front end of this car. I quite like it, I think it's a handsome little car. Wheel wise, we've got these 20 inch wheels with behind that absolutely massive carbon ceramic discs look at the size of that thing that is just enormous with yellow calipers you get the ceramic brakes as standard on the turbo s which is very very nice a lot of brands can learn from that around that we've got pirelli winter tires now it is around zero degrees out there's a super light snow going on every couple of seconds I can see a little snowflake coming by so great that we have winter tires but it's not great for performance because the car really struggles to put down the power with these tires uh, so there is a little caveat on today's review uh, we are not able to get the claimed numbers by Porsche and that definitely has to do with these tires the charge ports have been included really well just swipe left and swipe right to close them back up yeah there it goes um, super nice solution to have it uh, hidden like that and to have like a little electric door that is so nice as well now this car also has the passenger display and i don't think we've ever had a taycan with the passenger display and uh, when it was introduced I said it was completely ridiculous and uh, no one needs, needs this well I stand by it because if you look at the distance between like the buttons it it, it really doesn't make any sense and uh, you can you just have the same you have the same stuff that you have in this so you have your music and your navigation I mean it's not like you can watch TV or anything I think so yeah I really really don't understand this uh, I don't get the additional I don't get the added value of it but I mean it does look cool when you're driving along and you have another display here I guess uh, that is basically uh, what it's for and of course the Sport Turismo means that you have this this little bit of added practicality a really beautiful station wagon if you ask me they call it Sport Turismo and it is like the sportier version of the Cross Turismo basically which the Cross Turismo has these like plastic protection things around the wheel wells and it's got an extra driving mode uh, gravel and it the air suspension can go 10 millimeters higher if I'm not mistaken and this is a bit lower a bit sleeker a bit more for the road but I actually prefer the Cross Turismo I think the Cross Turismo looks super cool um, but I just like a fast station, as you guys know. So yeah, if you add an ass like this to a car that is so gorgeous, I usually tend to immediately think it's cooler than the regular version. <laughs> uh, uh, let me know in the comments. I don't know if you agree, but that is just how I feel. Little diffuser here in carbon fiber as well. Cool little ridges. And then the practicality I mean, it's not a super big car, but it definitely adds a little bit of practicality, uh, especially, you know, if you take this out, if you lower the rear seats, you definitely have a pretty nice loading area. And of course you have a frunk as well. Let me just take a moment to thank today's sponsor, which is 70 My. 
70 My, founded in 2016, is an industry leading auto intelligence company specializing in dash cams. From beginner friendly models for basic recording needs to premium 4K cameras with advanced smart features. To date, it has built a global market presence selling 1.5 million dash cams in a single year to 100 plus countries spanning Europe, North America and Southeast Asia. The 70My Dashcam Omni is an industry first 360 degree dashcam. With its no blind spot full view with a 340 degree swivel design and 140 degree field of view and equipped with AI motion detection and best in class night vision, it is designed to precisely capture any movement around the vehicle, maximize surveillance capability and avoid road safety related accidents. The 70My Dashcam is beautifully packaged and contains everything you need to install it in your car. It's easy to install and fits any car. You just use this electrostatic sticker on your windshield and attach the camera to it. You just connect it to the 12 volt power outlet in your car and to your phone and with the app you can access any photos and videos taken. It also features 24 hour parking surveillance with time lapse recording. Omni shoots a still picture every second during parking mode and compresses every 30 minutes into one minute to have a quick overview of all critical moments. It saves memory space, lowers battery usage and also allows for much faster playback. With Omni's AI motion detection, scenes and suspicious actions are clearly identified by an AI detection algorithm which avoids recording useless videos, which we know for a fact with our BMW M3's dash cam is absolutely horrible. We get in that car and every time it says that we had a collision. Uh, so this AI technology should really help with that. It also features an enhanced frame rate of 60 frames per second, which should eliminate a lot of the motion blur that you usually have, which means that you have a clearly visible license plate. The smart voice control of the Omni dash cam means that you can say a command and the camera responds immediately. Shoot left. The response time is fantastic. You can say shoot left, shoot right, emergency video, take a selfie. It actually works really well, really quickly. And in the event of a collision or any other calamity, uh, the camera records five seconds prior to the event. So you have the entire scene on camera. And last but not least, it also features best in class low light performance, especially with high contrast situations. So when you go into a tunnel or you exit the tunnel, the camera switches really quickly. Low light performance is as you can see, really impressive. Colors are really great as well. So if you're interested, go check out the 70 My 360 degree Omni dash cam. Uh, links are in the description. Big thanks to 70 My for sponsoring this video and enjoy the rest of this review. Interior wise, not much has changed since the last time we drove it. We have these beautiful seats. They are absolutely perfect. Seating position, they absolutely nailed that as usual at Porsche. And uh, well, it is just a, such a nice car to sit in. This is nice and high. You have those two bulges at the front. And it, it feels like the car just shrinks around you. It's quite a heavy car, 2,400 kilos. It's not a super big car. And it doesn't feel like that. It, it feels like a, a very nimble, manageable little car, which is very nice. So driving it in normal mode, we don't have any of the sport sounds. So you just hear like the whirring, whirring, that's a weird word. The whirring of the electric motors. One in the front, run at the rear. 93 point something kilowatt hour battery pack. And uh, it's got 625 horsepower and 850 newton meters normally, like this. So that's Martijn and the Plaid. Stay tuned for the comparison review between this and the Plaid. Should be a lot of fun. So uh, if we go to Sport Plus, the air suspension lowers, 625 horsepower, 850 newton meters of torque, should do zero to 100 in 2.8 seconds. So I'll stop here and do a launch control and my butt dyno will tell you. Launch control. So 
a lot of struggle there to put the power down and the fastest we've done is 3.2 seconds to 100 now i do think that if you warm up these tires a little bit we might be able to do it a bit quicker but i think martijn did try a couple of times and 3.2 was the fastest it should do 2.8 i'm going to put that down as a winter tire issue now you only have 625 horsepower 850 newton meters when you basically floor it like this still pretty quick but if you want that full 761 horsepower and 1050 newton meters you have to use launch control let's do another one so this is full power oh, little shift from the two-speed gearbox you can actually hear it as well which is very nice and then you have 10 seconds of overboost basically and that gives you that full power now the funny thing is well it's not really funny uh, you pay a lot of extra money for the turbo s you do get carbon ceramic brakes as standard you get some other stuff uh, better seats and stuff like that but the turbo also has 625 horsepower 850 newton meters as standard uh, and it's got 680 horsepower and uh, 850 newton meters in overboost so you gain 81 horsepower and 200 newton meters of torque only for 10 seconds if you use launch control and i'm not sure that that is enough to differentiate it from a turbo i mean it's like 40,000 euros extra i think in the netherlands and that is that is quite a big lump of money so yeah uh, the jury is still out if if that is worth it but the fun thing is if you turn off traction control you can really slide it around it sends a lot of power to the rear wheels and it's got a lot of power especially with these winter tires <laughs> i mean you will light them up very quickly now range wise uh this car does around 458 claimed wltp combined and uh, that is not great the entire take and range in general uh, the ranges are not great they can't really compete with like teslas and stuff like that i think if you want the best range you have to get the uh, regular take 4s with the performance battery plus you have like 510 i think that's the best one but if you want the fastest one this is the one to have full throttle the 800 volt architecture of the Taycan make sure that you can extract power from it multiple times without it overheating it also means that you can charge it up really fast that's top speed this is the limit basically 268 269 Will it go 270? No. Oh, those brakes are very nice. Woo! Pedal feels just beautiful. And we've got its big brother here. The Panamera Sport Turismo, right? Yeah. So this car basically feels like a combination of a 911 or a 718 Cayman and a Panamera. You've got the super comfy air suspension from this car, but because it's a little bit smaller, because it has the batteries in the floor, it has a very low center of gravity and it feels so nimble and agile and it, it feels like it pivots around you. And that is a combination that that just speaks to me and every time I drive it that, that is why this is one of my favorite Porsches of the lineup every time I drive it I'm in awe of how this car feels how it feels to drive a Taycan the suppleness and the fluidity of this chassis and suspension setup combined with that that super quick change of direction and and just driving feel is i don't know if there's anything that can really match that to be honest now 
you know, come to think of it, I'm trying to think of something that, that also combines those two things the way this car does. I don't think there are any. Oh, did you hear that downshift? <laughs> so the fake sound also blips like the throttle. That's, pre that's pretty funny. I don't really need that fake sound, you can turn it off anyway, which is great. Uh, but I think they did quite a good job in this car because it, it sort of simulates an engine sound without it you know, being a fake engine sound. It still has like an electric touch to it, but it's not as ridiculous as BMW's fake sound, which is just hilarious. Yummy. So we're going to do a launch control at the petrol station because we need that full 761 horsepower to show you guys. So that is something I don't really like about this car. I, I don't really like the fact that you need to do launch control to get the overboost and the overboost only lasts 10 seconds. So I think this car does zero to 200 in 9.6 seconds. And then, that, and that's basically it. So you've got that overboost, you've got that full power from from zero to two hundred, and that's it. Oh, we have to hurry up, I think. Oh no, we're just going to wait. Okay, so I'm going to do a launch to show you guys what it feels like with ESP off. So you'll hear and see that the car really uh, struggles to put the power down. Launch control. We'll do a zero to 200. A bit more maybe. That is pretty quick. It is pretty quick. Um, I really like the car. I think it, it is a magnificent car. I would honestly not be unhappy driving this car every day because I think it feels just so good and the build quality and just the driving feel the steering wheel is magnificent it is amazing but having just stepped out that model s plaid it feels a bit underwhelming i have to admit it it, it doesn't feel that quick and uh the numbers don't lie so i'm going to end it there i'm going to leave you with that knowing that we are going to do a comparison review very soon with the plaid and this turbo s so make sure you don't miss that and subscribe by clicking the big button you can also check out this video while you're waiting or this playlist of reviews for another one of those thanks for watching and i'll see you at the next one bye